At the Grassum Cellulosic Division, fibers essential to our daily lives are made, and large amounts of water is required in the production process. As one of the largest fiber producing plants, Grassum Cellulosic Division ensures the enormous amounts of water is used sustainably. And ELPs like Prince Sharma ensure all production processes are sustainable and don't leave an adverse impact on our natural resources. Here is how it all happens. Well, as we are here at Grassum Cellulosic Division. Last year, we came in here to understand how uh, pulp is made into fiber, which then gets into our clothing. Uh, this time around, we have Prince, who is going to tell us a little more about how this particular plant is working towards meeting its sustainability goals. And he is going to tell us about his learning, his journey, and what he has acquired in the last four years that he has been part of this particular place. So let's understand his journey in this particular video with me. All right, so as promised, I have with me Prince. Uh, Prince, thank you very much for joining us. Tell me a little bit about you before we get into your role and the kind of work that you do. Who is Prince? What kind of uh, upbringing did you have? And when did you decide that you want to do uh, an engineering? Since my childhood, I'll say that I was a good student. And uh, it was not like I was always uh, into engineering or something. But yes, there was a clarity that I am mostly into practical things. So I thought, OK, and technical things used to make me feel lively and all. So I thought somewhere that, okay, engineering will be a good thing to me. While you were growing up as an engineer, probably you were aware of the name ABG for sure. But when was the time when you actually got to know that you probably might work with ABG as well? Coming to the college only, I interacted with my seniors. And from there only, I got to know that ABG is coming for recruitment and all. So from first year only, I was aware with the this grassing section. We had a six day induction program in Mumbai. Then from there, we were allotted different businesses. So around 250 plus students were hired for, from all over the India for this, under this ELP program. So we were given different sections. Specifically, I was given this Grassim section. So from there, I uh, visited different units, right? Nagda, Kharaj, Haria, and uh, all including two months each. Apart from that, uh, six months project at uh, Mumbai. So under marketing section, I've done my project. Six months. Okay. Post that, again, coming to this manufacturing section, uh, I was allotted at Thalia Union. So for people, uh, Prince, who are watching this particular video, let's simplify ELP a little better for them. What exactly happens in this particular program? In the one year that you go to different stints, how does it help in your learning so that you are ready for the challenges that are upcoming in the role that the company is probably going to give you? So it happens in three steps. The very first thing is psychometric test, then the group discussion, and then the personal interview. So if you are selected, so you are lucky to be part of this ELP. So under this, uh, the people are uh, allotted different units, so be it Grassim or Ultratech or Hindalgo, whatever the division will be. And then they are given training for a particular period. So that period stands differently for different businesses. So for Grassim, it is six months training at three locations, Nagda, Hariyar and Kharaj. Now all Vilayats is also included in that. And apart from that, again, six months project in one specific location. So I also went through the same and post that you will be allotted a specific location for your upcoming journey. So after one year, I was allotted Harrier unit. So there I was looking after CS2 and H2SO4 manufacturing process. So I was into process over there. We will learn more about your work that you do and the kind of responsibilities that you handle. But uh, I mean, the rain has subsided. We can move around and see the plant a little bit and uh, see the kind of areas and the processes that you handle. Sure. So let's go. Alright Prince, so uh, we are here uh, in a very different kind of a place. I can see a lot of these uh, machines that are kept here, a lot of these towers that I can see behind me. What exactly is this place? How are you related to this? So this is basically effluent treatment plant. So Grassim being the one of the largest producers of fibre. This is 1200 TPD, so in the world. So we are right now in the effluent treatment plant. The effluent being generated from the plant, it is being treated here. Effluent is basically water being generated from the process. Right. So the waste water, whatever we are using in the process as a byproduct, which goes out of the process, that is being treated here. 
so the purpose of this uh, plant is to just uh, fresh out the water so that we can make it fit for uses right is this something that you are actively working in your uh, does this involve your you know, uh, you know knowledge your uh, expertise in making sure that the things are working fine and uh, you are getting the right uh, kind of a product out of this as well yeah actually right now i'm looking after this etp and ro section so what i need to do here is the processes which is going here and the chemical consumption combined in that that i need to take care of that it is at par or not that i need to check and i make to sure that the chemicals we are using and the effluent which is being treated here and the output being generated out of here all are uh, up to the mark being uh, meeting the norms that are set by the government and all so this fiber plant you know firstly we make viscous viscous is made out of pulp mixed with some different chemicals and uh, it is highly intensive intensive water requirement plant right. so the water requirement is around 8 to 10 meter cube per ton of fiber right. so because of that what we need to do is we just can't uh, keep taking water and uh, just discharging it so right. that needs to be treated so that treating section is on me i need to make sure that okay the water we are using uh, it is treated properly and before being discharged the maximum utilization of the recycle we can do that is made sure by this department so i'm looking after that department so in terms of sustainability how committed abg is and how this plant is probably a good example of the commitment that it has yes paul you are right like i said the total effluent quantity being treated every day here is around 30 to 35 mld million liters per day so it is kind of so much challenging to treat this plant and specially we have made a provision that we have established ro plant that is reverse osmosis plant by which we are 70% recycling the water we are generating so whatever the effluent we are taking in 70% will be reused to the process so that the net fresh water intake reduces so it is directly linked with the sustainability because whatever we are intaking that leaves a footprint on the back side right. and on the front end also so we make sure that maximum to maximum effluent we can recycle so that the fresh intake reduces so yes this is directly linked to the sustainability uh prince we'll talk a little more about your learning uh, the mentorship you have received and the kind of people that you work with here but uh, i want to see what exactly is happening in this particular place where you are working and how you are uh, saving a lot of water in uh, making the products that this particular plant makes so if you can show me around the place that will be great sure let's go friends from a place we were standing uh, this is quite a different place uh, to be honest and this does not look like a plant because uh, i can see a lot of the plants around me right why does this plant look so different from other plants so paul basically for every industry there is something called sustainability and this is somewhere we are so much into sustainability so the greenery you said it is because of that only so whatever we are producing and whatever the effluent we are discharging whatever the gases we are leaving to the atmosphere so we always try and we do hard to compensate it through sustainability by planting trees and all so that is a basic culture we are into okay uh, talking about culture another aspect of uh, building culture is what you are building among the people among the people who are working here what sort of a work culture do you see here uh, do you feel uh, intimidated talking to your seniors do you feel like they are your friends and they can always help you and do you pass that on to people that you work with yeah paul about this what i'll say that the culture which flows down the line here is like giving back to the society we believe in that so whatever we are taking we need to give it back with a multiplication factor about the culture i'll say that the top management always drives us in a direction where we give back to the society and for i'll say about the mentorship thing that the seniors here are like just family members they are for you every time whenever you need they'll guide you in every aspect of thing is this possible for somebody to have a growth that they always have dreamt of or thought of in this particular setup so for example you come in from uh, a different department right and uh, you try and uh, do something in a very different department is that possible to make that switch within this organization yeah so evg being a conglomerate so that is the best part i'll say about ebg is like when it comes about different companies you need to switch things but here that is not the scenario like within ebg only you have different companies 
different subsidiaries Beit, Grasim, Indalco, Ultratech, Carbon Black and so many. Right now we are also moving into paint business that is Birla Opus. So that is the new branch we are getting into. So again I'll say that there is diversity within this group. So you will never feel monotonous like you are doing the certain thing and you are stuck there. So you have to just wish of certain thing and you will get it handy. So that is the plus point and uh, about the movement and the growth I'll say it again depends on the individual because at some point of time everybody feels like he's not growing or he's not learning. So that is the right time you need to move or change your position. So when you do that you grow, you grow like anything. Great. Uh, let's end this video with a final piece of advice that you have for students who probably are like you four years back while you were in college, uh, probably thinking that what would be the best industry for you to make that call, make that choice, make that switch. What would be your advice for them? For the new joinees, I'll say that it depends on the individual, how they perceive about the company. But yes, specifically talking about TBG, it is one of the best place for growth, for learning, for everything. The reason behind this is that it is driven by values. So we have some value, be it integrity, commitment, passion, seamlessness and speed. And these are not just something to be said of. This is something that we actually follow. A specific advice for the new joinees will be keep learning, keep growing, keep moving. And yes, be up to date with the technology. Don't lag behind. So have optimistic approach. You will move and you will grow like anything. Lovely. And if you want to grow as well, uh, there's a link in the description. Uh, go check that out. Register yourself for the Conversations Cafe ELP, where you will get to meet uh, Prince as well and ask him questions live. Uh, do tell us in the comments below how you liked this particular episode, this particular video, and uh, do tell us which are the other companies that you would like to know from us in this series. Thank you very much, Prince, for doing this with us, and I hope that you reach the kind of heights that you have thought for yourself. Thank you, Paul. Thank, Thank you. you.